Hi everyone, I'm Jason Roberts. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can cheat the ISO setting on your camera to get maximum dynamic range, maximum sensitivity to colour, and also try and preserve those important highlight details when you're taking photographs. You can use this technique whenever you find yourself increasing the ISO on your camera when you can't either use a wider aperture or use a slower shutter speed, for example. Basically, what you do is instead of increasing the ISO in the camera, you actually use the base ISO of the camera, and then in Lightroom or other image editing software, you increase the exposure after you've taken the photo. For example, if the base ISO in your camera was 100, but you actually needed to shoot at ISO 3200, you'd still shoot at ISO 100, but then you'd increase the exposure until it matched that ISO 3200 exposure. The interesting thing is, once you increase that exposure slider in Lightroom, for example, the amount of noise you're gonna get in the image is gonna be roughly the same as if you would have shot the image at 3200 ISO in the camera. So why bother doing this? Let's take a look at some charts. So this is a chart for the Sony a7R 4 Up the left is dynamic range and on the bottom is the ISO setting. Notice in this chart as the ISO increases the dynamic range decreases. That means the higher you go with the ISO the less shadow and highlight detail you'll get in your photos. Also take a look at this chart. You can see here that the higher the ISO gets the less sensitive to colour the camera gets. And this chart shows that as you increase the ISO the amount of read noise also goes up. The reason for this drop here is that the a7R 4 has dual base ISOs at 100 and 320. So basically if you want maximum dynamic range, maximum sensitivity colour and lowest amounts of read noise, you should use the base ISO of your camera. If you're taking a photo and that base ISO is too low and the photo's too dark, you can still take the photo and then increase the exposure in Lightroom. This feature of digital cameras is known as ISO invariance. You might also hear the terms an ISO-less camera or an ISO invariant camera. Not all cameras are ISO invariant. I'll put a link down in the description to a great video by Alan Wallace, and he runs you through the process of performing your own test on your own camera to determine whether or not your camera is in fact ISO invariant or not. Also as a small added complication with the Sony a7R 4 it's actually got two base ISOs and two zones of ISO invariance, one from ISO 100 to 320 and one from 320 ISO upwards. Let's head into Lightroom now and I'll show you an example of this. So here's two unedited raw photos in Lightroom. This one was shot at the base ISO of 320 and this one was shot at 3200 ISO. Let's start off by equalizing the exposures. Just going to select this brighter one, hold shift, select this other one, come up to photo, come down to develop settings and choose match total exposures. This will make the brightness levels of both photos roughly equivalent. Now let's see if we can pull any detail out of these foreground shadows. What I'm going to do is edit this first version. Just gonna hit D to go to the develop module. And what we're going to do is we'll grab a graduated filter here and we'll just pull it up over this foreground area and we'll go and increase the shadows and see if we can pull some detail out of those areas. So we can see we've got some detail there. I'm just going to hit G to go back to grid view. I'm going to right click on this first version, come down to develop settings and choose copy. And I'm just going to make sure that these local adjustments are the only ones selected and hit copy. Then we're going to come back to this second one, right click, come down to develop settings and choose paste. And if we have a look at this second one, we can see now that that graduated filter has also been copied across here. Let's take a look at these photos side by side now and see if we can see any difference between them. Make sure you hit that like button if you're getting value out of this video so far. What I'm going to do is hit C to go to comparison view and we'll just get rid of the sidebar. If I just tap I a couple of times, you can see this version on the right is the ISO invariant one where we've increased the exposure. And this one on the left is the one that's at the native ISO 3200. If I just quickly show you the develop settings for this ISO 320 version, notice here that Lightroom has equalized the exposures by increasing the exposure slider here. Let's just go back to the comparison view and we'll start off by zooming in on this detail area down here. And you can see straight away there's a difference in the noise pattern. The noise on this ISO 3200 image on the left here seems a lot more pronounced than on the ISO invariant version on the right. And if we scroll around here, you can see a lot of this shadow area that we've boosted Boosted has a lot more noise. We can still make out details here and here, and there would have been some really small changes in lighting between when these two photos were taken. They were only taken a few seconds apart. But if, for example, we zoom in, you can see we can kind of make out this post here 
but it's very much lost among the noise on the native 3200 version. So this is just an example of that extra dynamic range in action. Just going to zoom back out. Let's have a look next at the color detail in the stars here. So it's quite subtle, but I think there is a very small amount of difference in the amount of color in the ISO invariant version. For example, you can see these two stars here are slightly more purple or have slightly more color than the same two stars here on the native 3200 version. Let's just have a scroll around and see if we can see any other differences. And this probably won't show up with the YouTube compression on this video, but there is a very, very slight increase in the color rendition here of these areas. So on my screen here, I can actually see a little bit of magenta detail in this area, but in the same area on the native 3200 version, it basically looks gray and there's no color there. And overall, there just seems to be a lot more color in some of these stars throughout this whole image. So this is just an example of that increased sensitivity to color at the base ISO. So to summarize this concept, you can use ISO invariants where ordinarily you'd increase the ISO, but you still want to maintain maximum dynamic range. You can also use ISO invariants if you're doing astrophotography and you want to maximize that dynamic range. And you can also use this technique when it's absolutely critical to preserve all of those highlight details. By shooting at a lower ISO, you're more likely not to clip or overexpose those highlights. There's a couple of negative to using this approach, the first of which is if you're using a low ISO, you may not actually be able to see much in the viewfinder or on the LCD screen because it's too dark. In that case, you actually have to increase the ISO, compose your shot, take a test shot and just check it on the monitor, and then actually reduce the ISO back down to the base and take the actual shot that you want to edit. All of that takes a little bit of extra time in the field and it's also a little bit of a faff. And also this technique will only work if you're shooting raw images. If you're a JPEG shooter, you won't be able to take advantage of this feature. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.